even though we are discussing, or we mentioned the Boston as the area of, of discussion, you'll find, however, that while that's the case, the information that you'll learn today, you'll be equipped with a wealth of knowledge to find tenants in really any city. Um, <clears throat> being prepared with these tools and the information uh, needed to properly secure an, a great tenant is absolutely crucial. Having this knowledge is beneficial to both new and experienced landlords because we want to be sure that we're not only protecting our investments, but that we're prepared to provide the best service to our tenants. By the end of the presentation, <clears throat> you'll be equipped with the skills necessary to do this, not only with confidence, but to be able to implement them and appropriately. And also, if you stick around to the end, um, as a special thank you, we'll be sending you some important essentials for running your business. Uh, also, please note that there is a section in your panel that allows you to ask questions. If you do have a question throughout the presentation, please feel free to pop it in that area. And towards the end, we will be answering all of your questions. So, <clears throat> A little bit about us. My name is Cheryl Rickett. I'm part of the team, an amazing team here at um, Mandrill Company in Boston. And real estate has always been a passion of mine. Uh, beyond commercial and residential sales and rentals, one of my focuses is uh, business and brand development for landlords. Because the truth is, being a landlord is a business all its own and requires the same dedication as any other provider of any goods and services. Um, and Kate, actually, is on with us as well. Kate? Hi, everyone. I also want to thank you for your time and welcome you to the presentation. As Cheryl mentioned, my name is Kate. I'm a real estate agent and investor. I've worked with the Mandrell Company for a little over a year now, and I've been investing in real estate and renting apartments for about 10 years. I currently own three investment properties on the South Shore, and I run the South Shore Women's Real Estate Group, which is a group for women investors in the South Shore area. And with that, I will turn it over to Cheryl so she can start the presentation. Okay, without any further ado. So, <clears throat> step one, actually, one of the first very crucial points to find a great tenant is to prepare your rental. With that, you want to make sure that you price your property right. When uh, you see here a CMA, which is a comparative market analysis, that's something that you can get from a real estate agent. It takes just minutes if you were to request one. Um, we go through our database and kind of do a comparison of all different uh, properties that match the same type of property that you have, be it a three-bedroom, uh, two-bath. We'll do a comparison and kind of give you a rundown of different properties in your area that match that. Um, however, there are things you can do on your own, uh, such as going on Craigslist and kind of typing in the same criteria, three beds, two baths, and kind of seeing what everybody else is putting their property up for um, in your area. Uh, also, you want to make sure that if you're going to be renting, um, renting out your property that you know if it has lead or not. Um, Actually, we're going to be doing a lead webinar coming up soon, to, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but um, with that, um, you do, again, want to know if you have it in your property. There are um, companies that you'd be able to contact that will come in and do inspections and abatements um, because you want to be sure that if you are renting to any children six and under, that they're protected from the lead that could possibly be in your property. Uh, you want to make sure that you clean your property, um, that you get it prepared for your tenant. That's one of the biggest deal breakers that I've seen with tenants. The place could be completely beautiful in terms of uh, the appliances that you might have in, uh, but if you haven't cleaned it properly from your last tenant, 
you know, there's still maybe uh, remnants for in the, the tubs or food particles in the kitchen, regardless of how the fixtures might be that tends to turn people off. You want to make sure that you either clean it yourself or hire a professional to do so. And also on the subject of um, having, you know, the appliances, um, you want to make sure that if you're going to, if you want to get a really good value on your property that you do the modifications and upgrades necessary to, to do that. Um, that would include upgrading possibly your appliances to stainless steel, maybe putting granite countertops in on your kitchen, um, upgrading the shower heads in your bathroom. That's also another big um, uh, plus for a lot of renters. They like the um, the rainforest type of shower head a lot. That's very attractive. So if you want to put, you know, different things like that in your property, that'll definitely give you more um, bang for what you're looking for for your rental. Okay, the second step to finding great tenants is great advertising for your unit. Finding high quality tenants for a residential rental property you own or manage can be very challenging. Start off right by making sure you have top-notch advertising so that the right tenants are able to find you. How does advertising help you find great tenants? Strong advertising equals more applications. More great applicants provide you with a larger pool of people to pull from, making it easier to find the right tenant for your property. The first step in strong advertising is creating a web page for your building. I need to go back one. Okay. So you want to create a great web page, and in order to do that, you need to take great pictures. As Cheryl previously mentioned, you're going to want to have your apartment in great shape. Make sure it's clean with fresh paint and take some good pictures. Most camera phones can take adequate pictures, but if you have a friend with a DSLR camera, that's even better. Or if you feel like you can afford it, it's always beneficial to hire a professional. Along with the photos, what you'll want to do is add the dimensions of the rooms in your apartment. This will help out-of-state renters know if the apartment is the right place for them. Next, if you want to take it a step further, you can add drone footage. Drone footage will allow you to create a great video of not only your rental, but what the surrounding area has to offer. So you buy a great beach, are you close to a nice park, good restaurants downtown, Take a short drone footage and you can add that video to your web page. After you have your photos and your video, the next step is to write great copy. So you're trying to sell your unit. You want to write copy for the apartment that helps sell it. Make sure you highlight all that the apartment and the surrounding area have to offer potential tenants. Once you have your pictures, your drone footage, and your copy, the next thing you'll want to do is push it out on social media. Traditional rental sites are great, Zillow and Trulia, but don't forget the power of social media. Post your web page on various local Facebook groups, make sure you're using your own social network, and don't just rely on rental websites. Okay, the next step once you have your website all set up is the rental application and online system. How does this help you find great tenants? You'll use this information to run background checks and eliminate potential problem tenants. It also provides you with the opportunity to provide rental policies so there's no confusion later. The rental application is the document used to collect personal information about the applicant and co-applicants so that you can perform background checks. There are great online tools available to save you time and money for this process. Online systems around, allow interested parties to create accounts and apply, um, and apply for the apartment, saving you from printing applications and trying to read their handwriting. The background and credit checks are then sent directly to you. In addition to the application, provide a rental policy sheet that clearly spells out the terms and conditions of the lease, such as pets, co-signers, and renter's insurance requirements. Rental applications can request an applicant's full name, social security number, previous address, driver's license numbers, income sources and amounts, job titles, employer contact information, 
children's names and ages, number of pets and their breeds, and references. You can collect money to cover the cost of running the background check and credit check. In the office, we use a system called My Smart Move to run the background checks. Um, tenants are able to enter their own information and pay via credit card. It's very easy. The next step, once you have your application all set up, is the background check and credit check. After you receive the information on the application, you're going to want to run the background and credit check to look for evictions. Evictions can pop up because of missed payments, failure to pay on time, violating apartment complex policies such as having pets when you shouldn't, smoking in non-smoking areas, and noise complaints, conducting illegal acts, and you want to look for these on the public records section of the credit report and speak to past landlords. Next, you're going to look at the criminal records. Two things to keep in mind, a criminal conviction and being arrested are two different situations, so you will want to talk to the applicant about that. And then consider crimes that have a direct relationship to the applicant's ability to fulfill the requirements of the lease. Next, you're going to want to look at bankruptcy. Obviously, you want a tenant that is financially responsible. And you'll always want to consider the timeline of the bankruptcy. If it was years ago and there's a clear history of financial responsibility following the bankruptcy, the applicant is worth considering. Once you've done that, just remember, always wait for the check to clear before you consider the apartment rented. And as a landlord, never accept cash. Something to keep in mind is you always want to remember to run background and credit checks on all applicants. You cannot run these reports on only a few applicants and not on others based on your judgment. Uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Cheryl. Okay, so another very important part of that same application process, and which is now our step five, is the employment verification. Very, very important. Always make sure that when you are verifying employment that you talk directly to somebody in HR. Um, I know oftentimes it can be difficult to reach individuals in HR, and but it, it's definitely well worth it to try and contact the corporate office for, for um, employment verification. Um, this being because if, if you were to solely rely on the past three or four pay stubs, that's not necessarily indicative of their continuing employment. Um, also, on the rare occurrence that you might have forged um, pay stubs, that could definitely get you into trouble that you do not want to be in. So make sure that when you do, also when you do contact HR, or if you are unable to get in touch with the HR department and you happen to get in touch with maybe a general manager, say the person works at a restaurant or, or, or something of that nature, make sure that you get verification in writing that they are currently employed, the amount of money that they're making, um, their direct management, and so on, just so that you can have record that this person is employed and that they are able to afford the apartment that you are providing them. Next, you want to make sure that you understand the laws in uh, in your, your area. Primarily, again, we're talking about Boston now, but it, anywhere, you want to make sure that you understand the laws. Um, Massachusetts actually has compiled many publications that encompass the landlord, tenant rights and responsibilities and laws um, on the government website. And actually, um, we've, we'll be providing our contact information towards the end. If you want to contact me on that, I can forward that information to you as well. But you want to be sure that you are avoiding discrimination at all costs, um, be it family size, disability, um, race, age, and anywhere. Um, and it could be really easy to accidentally um, discriminate. So it's always good to uh, make sure that you understand the laws. And if you want to be more comfortable in the area, um, I highly recommend um, hiring a good real estate attorney to work on your behalf, to consult even, to make sure that you're doing everything in the best way that you can. 
not give it right Okay, back. so the next step is checking references. And if possible, you want to check landlord and personal. You should talk to at least two of the tenant's previous landlords. How will this help you find a great tenant? Well, if the applicant was a problem tenant, the current landlord may leave out important information in order to get rid of the tenant. So you want to be careful. And some of the questions you should ask is, did the tenant pay the rent on time? What was the reason for the move? Was the tenant evicted for non-payment of rent or for breaking some of the landlord's rules? Did the tenant give 30 days notice prior to moving? How did they keep their apartment? Was it clean when they went in to make repairs or was it constantly a mess? Did they cause any damage to the apartment other than normal wear and tear? Were they respectful of their neighbors and did they complain a lot? An important one is were they respectful of their neighbors because you don't only want to make sure that they were good to the landlord, you want to make sure they won't, weren't causing problems for other tenants in the building as well. Speaking with past landlords and references will help you determine if a candidate is a good fit financially. It is also helpful to request personal references that are not family members. Questions to ask personal references include how does the reference know the applicant? How long has the reference known the applicant? How frequently does the reference keep in contact with the applicant? Is it somebody that they know well? Is a reference a former roommate or co-tenant? So do they know what it's like living with them as a tenant? How was the reference served as a reference before? If yes, for what purpose? Is there a business relationship with the applicant? And does the reference think that the applicant would be a good tenant and why? And this is a step I can't reiterate enough. It is very crucial to check on references. You will learn a lot about a person this way. Right. And the next step, once you've checked references, is making sure you have a strong lease and house rules. A strong lease sets the terms and conditions for the tenants living in the home. You want to make sure you have who will live in the apartment, when the rent is due, penalties for late rent, penalties for losing keys or calling for lockouts, and spell out the policies and basis for eviction. I highly recommend having having a, an attorney review your lease to make sure it covers all the bases, both for evictions and for late payment. Um, along with the, the lease, we always include a set of house rules. Um, in the house rules, we include how the apartment should be maintained, no painting, no nails in the wall, not using certain cleaning products that might harm pipes. We include rules in regards to smoking, where it's okay to smoke, rules for common areas, and rules around noise when quiet hours start and end. It's not only helpful for setting the tone for tenants, but when we've had issues between two sets of tenants, it's a nice you know, document to have to go back to and say the rules have been spelled out. You've got to stick within these quiet hours. You can't be smoking in the house. You know, there's no running in the hallways. So it's a nice piece of paper to have along with your, along with your strong lease. Okay, and, uh, and the next Sorry, Kate. We... Next up? No, go ahead. All right. So the next one, um, actually part of that strong lease is detailing in there, making sure that you have a clause that requires that your tenants secure renter's insurance for the duration of the tenancy at your property. This is a very, very good idea to do because it protects your tenants, you as well, but your tenants above and beyond what the homeowners, homeowners insurance covers. Uh, so with that, your tenants' renters' insurance will cover, uh, let's say they have guests over and somebody slips and falls in the apartment and injures themselves. That renters' insurance will kick in to cover those type of incidents that happen within their apartment. Um, another example is, um, unfortunately, a lot of fires tend to happen, and um, people in those cases oftentimes lose everything. Having renter's insurance will secure that tenant in the event that something like that happens. Um, same as uh, thefts, even, um, will secure loss of property in events of that nature. So the last step we have here is finding a great rental agent. 
Finding a tenant can be time consuming and exhausting. A real estate agent can find a great tenant for you and it won't cost you anything. At the Mandrell Company, we offer our clients extensive online marketing of your property and proven venues, the largest rental department in Boston to show your property, especially marketing efforts for luxury rental properties in the area. We take you through the entire application process from qualifying your prospective tenant to providing a lease that best suits your needs. We assist you in setting up your deposits in compliance with Massachusetts law. And we help identify property management companies to assist you along with a list of preferred vendors for helping you with updates or repairs. So if this is something that seems overwhelming to you or you just don't have the time to do it, please don't hesitate to give us a call. We're happy to help you with each and every step along the way. Awesome. And with that, reach out to see if anyone has any questions. Okay. If you have any questions, please feel free to enter them into the question box in your webinar panel. Okay. Okay, let's see here. Okay. Give another minute or so for some questions if you'd like to ask questions. Even while we wait for questions, we can put up our email addresses. And if you'd like to reach out to us directly uh, via email, feel free. Again, Cheryl has tons of experience renting in Boston. I have been renting for a while and have multifamily properties in the area, so happy to help you, you know, with any questions you have in regards to renting. If you need contact information for specific vendors, if you need forms, um, if you just want to call for advice, please don't hesitate to email us or pick up the phone and give us a call. We love to talk about real estate, so we're always here. All right. So with that, I see that there are no questions that came in, which can be a good thing because that means that we gave you a good amount of information. Yay. So, um, so yeah, um, again, as Kate did say, we have our email addresses right here for you. If you would like to contact us um, with any questions or if you needed anything, um, I actually, as I said before, um, we are doing a deletting webinar very, very soon. Um, stay tuned for that. However, if you do currently have a property or if you have a question about deletting or if you need some deletting resources beforehand, please feel free to reach out to me. I have a ton of different contacts. Um, you know, within the city and with um, with companies that remove and inspect. So um, you can email me, Cheryl, at mandrelco.com. I can also, as I mentioned in previous a previous slide, send you the Massachusetts Laws um, websites and resources that I have uh, for you if you would like to review them as well. Okay. So with that, thank you so much for sticking with us for this webinar. And as a thank you, we would like for you to, we'd like to send you actually a packet of forms that will help you to be the best landlord possible. In this packet, you're going to have sample leases, applications, uh, it's just a, a wealth of different items. I can't even name them all here. So go ahead and text free forms to 44. 222 and we'll send that right over to you and you can put that right into your computer and when you start renting out your property you will have all you need from start to finish. I want to thank you again very much for joining us today and we hope that you again we answered all of your questions but again contact us anytime if you have any questions or if you need any assistance in renting your property at all. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye.